Okay, in this example, I'll do a um, chi-square test of association or independence using hand calculations. So we'll use a straightforward um, chi-square formula, which is chi-square equals observed minus expected squared over expected and then we'll sum up um, that value for each cell in the design. Uh, so the first thing is we need to get our um, expected values given independent. So assuming that these two variables are independent. So we're looking at um, passing and failing a class based on whether or not a student uh, has or does not have the book. So we're looking to see are these two variables associated or independent. So the null hypothesis would be that they are independent of each other, they're not related. The alternative would be that they are uh, related in some way. So to do that first we have to get uh, the expected frequencies. To get the expected frequencies for each cell we'll take the row total times the column total and divide it by the total sample size. So we'll get the row and column totals first. So we'll take the total number of people who own the book is 57. So that's the row total for the first row. For the second row, total number of people who do not have the book is 54. Total number of people who pass the class is 73 and the number of people who failed the class is 38. So we can go ahead and compute the expected values. I'll make another 2 by 2 table to plug in our expected values. So if we take the row total for the first row, which is 57, and multiply it by the column total, which is 73, and then divide it by the overall total. The overall total is 111 in this example. So we take 73 times 57 and divide it by 111. We're taking 73 times 57 and dividing by 111 with the expected value under if these variables are independent would be 37.49. And now we'll do the same thing for the next cell. We'll take 57 times 38 and divide it by 111 and we get 19.51. And for no book passing the class, we'll take 73 times 54 and divide by 111. We'll get 35. Point five one. And then finally for the last cell, no book and failing the class, 38 times 54 divided by 111 get 18.49. Okay, so finally we can plug everything into the equation here, take the observed minus the expected, square it, and then divide it by the expected value. So I'll continue putting it in the 2 by 2 table like before. So if we take 40 minus 37.49, square it, and then divide it by 37.49. So we're taking 40 minus 37.49, squaring the difference, and then dividing it by 37.49. So 
so that's 40 minus 37.49 squared and then divided by 37.49 we get 0.17 and we'll do the same thing for this cell here we'll take 17 minus 15 19.51 17 minus 19.51 square the difference and then divide it by the expected value which is 19.51 and we get 0.32 now we'll do this cell uh, pass and notebook 33 minus 35.51 squared 33 minus 35.51 squared over 35.51 and we get 0.18 and then finally for the last cell take 21 minus 18.49 Square it and divide it by 18.49, and we get 0.34. So we now have observe minus expected squared divided by expected. The last step is just to add up those values to get our chi square value. So we have 0.17 plus 0.32 plus 0.18 plus 0.34 and we get approximately 1. So our chi-square value is 1. Most almost certainly is not going to be anywhere near any cutoff we might use for statistical significance. We get 1.01. .01. Our degrees of freedom for this test are the number of columns minus 1 times the number of rows minus one so that's simply one times one so our degrees of freedom for this test are one so with one degree of freedom with one degree of freedom and let's say alpha point zero five we would need to get a three point eight four we're nowhere near that we're at one so we would fail to reject the null and for the time being we retain the null and say so we don't have any evidence to suggest that these two variables are related. I'm going to go on and compute the um, uh, relative risk, um, even though this is not a significant, there's not a significant relationship by any means between these two variables. Let's go ahead and compute the relative risk uh, for failing the class um, for those who don't have the book and, and those who have the book. So for those who um, who have the book 17 out of 57 people failed right so if you have the book of those who have the book 17 out of 57 failed now of those who don't have the book Thirty um, twenty-one out of thirty-eight failed. I'm sorry, I mean twenty-one out of fifty-four. Twenty-one out of fifty-four failed. Of the people who don't have the book, twenty-one out of fifty-four failed. So we could compute the um, relative risk by dividing the probabilities into each other. So actually, if we take 21 divided by 54, we get 0.38. So it might make more sense if we put that in the numerator. 
I just like dealing with numbers above one for relative risk. So 0.38, we'll, put, we'll move this to the numerator and then we'll divide it by, set. we'll take 17 over 57 and we'll get roughly 0 0.30. So I, I switched it up. I put um, the probability of failing given that you don't have the book in the numerator, which makes more sense here, and the probability of failing given that you do have the book. I put that in the denominator, and we'll get our relative risk of 0.38 divided by 0.3 gives us roughly 1.27. So what this tells us is that the people who don't have the book uh, seem to be failing at 1.27 times or more likely to fail at 1.27 times more likely to fail than those who have the book. Uh, although we should view those results with caution because these are completely made up data and also our chi-square value was statistically non-significant. That's how you would compute a chi-square test of independence using um, in a 2x2 two two contingency table and computing uh, relative risk as an effect size measure.